enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it i am pastor bridget ogbefo inviting you to join me every friday at 6 a.m on the tobago inspirational network for gateway to life where we explore the word of god through the help of the spirit of god i bring greetings to you in the name of our lord jesus christ i am pastor bridget ubefone and this is gateway to life it's a brand new day that the lord has made and i am so much filled with joy to be here again and I know that you are filled with joy as well. How do I know that? Because you are alive. You have breath in your nurseries. You're not in the grave. You're not in the morgue. You're not in the hospital. Even if you're on, the, on an hospital bed, you are alive hearing me this morning. So it's enough reason to be happy and to give God thanks for. And so before we go into what we have today, let's just say a short word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day that you have made that I will rejoice in and be glad. Thank you, O oh God, for your word that is coming today again, O oh God. I pray that you will help us to understand these words even as they come forth today in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be able to live our lives according to your will, according to what your word says. That will not just be hearers of your word, O oh God, that will be both hearers and doers of your word. That at the end of the day, the glory shall continually be yours. Thank you, Father, for answering me, for I have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Welcome again to Gateway to Life this morning. I have titled what I have to say. It wasn't easy putting in a title, but God will help us. I titled it, Staying on the Path of Truth. Staying on the Path of Truth. And the basic things we want to look at today, the major, the meat of the message, is how as representative of God, as children of God, we are called to be people of truth. In other words, we are expected to speak the truth at all times. And wherever we find ourselves, whatsoever situation we find ourselves, we are expected to not only, only believe the truth or be the part of the truth, we are also expected to speak the truth. And by the grace of God, we'll be looking at scriptures that will help us put flesh, you know, to that um, skeletal structure that we have just uh, said. And I want to take my text from the book of Acts chapter 5. It's a long one, so we want to read through. Acts chapter 5 from verse 1. It says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all the men that heard these things. And the young men arose, warned him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, with, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and they shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her 
by her husband. Staying in the path of the truth. You know, at the minute that we had that salvation experience, when we had an encounter with Jesus, and when we receive the indwelling of the Spirit of God, we have automatically the ability to be able to live a life of truth. We have the ability to be able to speak the truth at all times. And when I keep looking at this story of Ananias and Sapphira, the wife of some people say Sapphira, whatever way you want to pronounce it, Ananias and his wives, I don't know what came over them. The scripture made us to understand when we just read it, Acts chapter 5, they had a land possession, as people would believe it, and they sold it. Nobody forced them. They decided to bring the money to the house of God, but they were untruthful because they did not bring all that they sold from the possession. And the Bible made me to understand, do you know the man of God even gave them an opportunity to, wrong, to right their wrong? To speak the truth in place of a lie. And he asked them, is this all you got from me? They said, yes, that is all. And the Bible makes us to understand that they fell and died. I wonder sometimes if we still have such acts happening in this present day. Where will you and I be? How many times have we stood boldly even in the presence of God to tell lies? How many times have we deceived people with the words of our mouth? If we still had this kind of act taking place, where will you be today? Where will I be today? Would we have ended up like Ananias and Sapphira? Oh, thank God for grace. Would we have ended, ended up like Ananias? Food for thought this morning. And so we are going straight into what we have. God is the source of truth. Like I said from the beginning, the minute you get born again and you receive Christ into your life and the Spirit of God comes to dwell on your inside, you have the source of truth on your inside. So you have no excuse to keep living the life of a lie, to keep living your day-to-day -day life based on lies. Some of us may even graduate to the extent of lying to the Holy Ghost like Ananias did. Because Peter was quick to tell him, you did not lie to men, you lied to God. You do not have an excuse to live that life of a lie because you have the source of truth on your inside. God is the source of truth. He cannot lie. Even his word is truth. We will be looking at a couple of scriptures this morning. I want us to go along. The reason why you and I have no excuse to live a life of telling lies hallelujah look at what the bible says in john chapter 17. hallelujah john chapter 17 and look at what verse 3 says and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent god is the only true god he is the source of truth and so do you have God? If you have God, why do you still struggle with going on the path or staying on the path of truth? Look again what the Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 6. Staying on the path of truth. John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, if you want to have access to God, you have to go through the path of truth. And Jesus himself here is declaring that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you have Jesus on your inside, if you have a relationship with Jesus, what business do you have with lies? Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Staying on the path of truth is what we are looking at this morning. We have been called to be witnesses of the truth. Not just in professing, I know God, he's the way, the truth, and the life. I know his word. We have to practically live that life of being a man or a woman of truth. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4. 
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 21. It says, If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. We are establishing the fact that truth, God is the source of truth. And if you have Jesus, you have the source of truth on your inside. It's not just believing in on it. It's not just make believe that we do. It's not just professing that I am a Christian, I have Christ. You must exhibit that trait. If you have the source on your inside, then the water, the well of truth should always gush out of you. Hallelujah. And finally, we are looking at John chapter 14 and verse 17. John chapter 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So without knowing that, with these few scriptures we have looked at, we have been able to at least establish that we have the source of truth on our inside as believers. That we are connected to the fountain of truth. And so, when it comes to living or staying on the path of truth, there is no impossibility. It is possible to live a life of truth. While on the other hand, lies come from Satan. Lies is of the devil. Lies has its source rooted in Satan himself. And so, sweet and bitter waters cannot flow from the same vessel. Sweet and bitter waters should not flow from the same fountain. If lies come from the devil, how do I know? So how do you know that? The, look at what the Bible says to establish the fact that the devil is the source of lies. Right from the beginning, the devil is the source of lies. And so let's look at John chapter 8, the same John chapter 8, and see what the Bible says in verse 44. Listen, it says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Do you get that in John 8, 44 where we just said Lord Jesus was speaking. He said that the devil is the father of lies. He says that lying is what he's good at. Lying is where he is comfortable in. Lying is what he lives by. And so, without needing a prophet to prophesy, without needing the so-called wise to analyze, if the devil is the father of lies, and you choose to live a life of lies, every word that comes from your mouth is lies. Or a lies. Every word that comes from you is far from the truth. I want you to, to put two and two together. If the Bible describes the devil as father of lies and you are telling lies and living a lie of lies, work out the maths for yourself. But what I've come to tell you this morning is that there is power behind the truth. When you have Christ in your life, I am speaking to you, brother. I am speaking to you, sister, wherever you may be hearing the sound of my voice. Do not give up in standing up for the truth. You may not be a popular person right now. You may not be the favorite of the majority right now. You may not be, you know, seen as the best of the best right now. But never quit standing on the path of the truth. In the part of the world where I come from, there is a proverb that says, lies may travel for 20 years. It says, but when the truth picks up in one day, it catches up with the lie and it overtakes it. 
In other words, telling the truth is power. It's a tool in our hand. Hallelujah. So I've come to tell you this morning, if you understand anything I'm trying to say, that as children of God, as people of God, we should be known for the truth. If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then what other things can you say that will matter outside the truth? And if the Bible goes furthermore to describe the devil as the father of lies, it means that liars and those who tell them are the children of the devil. If the Bible can be so explicit about this, then what are we doing in the path of lies? The devil started lying way back from the beginning in the book of Genesis. Time will not permit us to go and read through. If you look at Genesis chapter 3, when the devil came, you know, to twist the words of God, and he came to ask Eve, he said, has God really said, has God really said you should not eat? And he told lies, and today, the repercussion of those lies that were believed by Eve, Today, the repercussion is history. We are all where we are today because of that lie that was told by the old man. And because Eve did not allow truth to take root in, in her. Because the Bible says it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. If truth is resident on your inside, hallelujah. If truth takes root on your inside, then it will flow through your mouth. Then it will flow through the things that you say. Then it will flow through the things that you do. Stay on the path of truth. Speak the truth at all times. Reason be that lies have more danger than we could ever think of. So many lives have been destroyed because of one lie that was told. So many destinies have been damaged because somebody chose to tell a lie. So many marriages have been mashed up because somebody told a lie. So many lives have been ruined, even health-wise, because somebody chose not to speak the truth. So many children's destinies have been destroyed because one parent chose to lie to them. Stay on the path of truth. That word truth is one thing that is abused even in the church. Because many times we say, look, I am standing here and I am speaking the truth. I am telling you. Some people go as far as telling you, I am standing under God and I am speaking the truth. But at the end of the day, are we speaking the truth? If there was nothing to gain from standing on the path of the truth, the devil would, the, the Bible would not have admonished us to stay on the path of the truth. Let's go further. The reason why you must tell the truth, because lies destroys. Lies will destroy your health. It will destroy friendship. It will destroy union. It will destroy relationship. It could even destroy a ministry. Lies destroys. Lies is like cancer. When it comes into a healthy environment, it destroys the healthy cells. And you know what? It spreads rapidly. Lies destroys. Let's quickly look at what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. We are looking at the reason why you should stick to the path of the truth. Because lies, number one, lies destroys. It destroys 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Look at what the Bible says. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they may speak no guile. Hallelujah. You see what the Bible says? It says you should refrain your lips from evil. In other words, do not say three things that are not true. Lies destroys. Have you ever imagined that a patient will lie to his doctor? 
Many a times you go to the hospital and probably you are preparing to do, you know, a procedure and they will come and ask you so many questions. They ask you, do you smoke? Do you take alcohol? And this and for us women, when you are going to make a baby, they ask you, how many babies have you had? It doesn't matter the ones dead and alive. They ask you all these questions. Have you imagined if a patient chose to tell the doctor lies? The doctor will work based on the information that you gave them. They will give you medication based on the information that you gave them. But you know what? In the long run, whatever you get will be your problem. Because you chose to tell a lie. And so people have gotten their health damaged just because they chose to tell a lie. And the Bible tells us clearly here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, let your lips, refrain your lips from evil if you must do well in life. So many friendships have been damaged because of lies. And like we read from the beginning, lies you know, can be traceable to the devil himself. And that is why the Bible calls him the father of lies. So many trust have been lost because somebody chose to lie. And then marriages have been destroyed because of lies. Choose to remain on the path of truth. Especially if you have had an encounter with Jesus himself. So you don't have no excuse because you have the source of light, the source of truth on your inside. When we were growing up as little children, my parents instilled it in us. Even at the point of death, speak the truth. But they will quickly put in, look, if you are speaking the truth, you will be vindicated. And you want to tell me today, sister, that is the news, that is old time news. Because so many people are rotting in jail today for speaking the truth. So many people have been killed today for speaking the truth. But I still dare to tell you this morning, you choose the path of truth and leave the rest for God. Choose the path of truth and leave the rest for God. What else does the Bible say? Let's look at Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4. Speaking the truth at all times, even when it is not convenient. Look at what the Bible says in 15 and verse 4. It says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A wholesome tongue. Is a tree of life. When you choose to breathe on your tongue, when you choose to allow the Spirit of God to direct you in the path of truth, the Bible describes that you will be like that tree of life. You give hope to people. You are not cutting people that I'm speaking to you this morning. I don't know who you may be. I don't know where you are hearing me from. How many lives are you destroying by speaking things that are not true? How many destinies have you derailed by speaking things that are far from the truth? How many marriages have you damaged by speaking things that are not true? The Bible says that when you choose the way to speak in the way of wholeness. They say, and wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Choose to give life rather than bring death, rather than bring destruction. I always tell people, I say, if you want a good health, humans can only do their best to heal you as doctors. You cannot choose to lie to your doctors. If you cannot lie to humans, you cannot lie to your lawyer. If you want your lawyer to fight a good case for, for you, you have to tell them the whole truth. Give them the details to the best of your knowledge. As truthful as you can be. If then we cannot lie to humans. Why do we lie? If we cannot lie to save our own selves, why do we lie to destroy other people? Food for thought this morning, people of God, food for thought. 
And so I want you to know today that God expects us to live a life of giving out the truth at all times. We will not be able to conclude today. We will come further to see, you know, the reasons, more reasons why you have to stay on that path of truth. If you forget anything today, do not forget the fact that I said that the devil himself is the source of lies. So if you have identified with Christ, some of us even love to quote the scriptures. He said, I bear in my body the mark of Christ. He said, let nobody trouble me henceforth. I paraphrase it. If you bear in your body the mark of Christ, what business do you have with the lies of the devil? Hallelujah. So this morning, I want you to take time to think on these words that I've spoken. Let's remember Ananias and Sapphira. If one of them had told the truth, probably they would still be living. Probably they would have lived long enough to be able to even write their own stories, to be able to affect lives positively. But because they chose to go the path of lies, the Bible says that they died untimely. That was not God's will for them. They chose to go the path of death because they chose to tell a lie when they should have spoken the truth. And so this morning you are hearing the sound of my voice and you are having it hard, you know, speaking the truth at all times. You cannot do it on your own, especially when you do not have connection to the source of truth. The source of truth where we read from the various Bible passages we read this morning, God himself is the source of truth. Jesus is the source of truth. If you do not not have a connection with Jesus, there is no way you can speak the truth. You will continue to live a life of a lie and you will speak the you will speak lies at all times because the devil is in control of your life. And so you're hearing me, you want to give your life to Jesus wherever you are. I want you to just lift up your right hand as you stay after me. Father Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner and I give myself over to you. I choose the path of truth. Come into my life and make me whole. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I confess my sins and I forsake them. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Hallelujah. If you just said that prayer, I want you to go rejoicing because the whole of heaven is rejoicing right now. And you have been saved and you have been connected to that source of truth on your inside. And so I will come back next week and take it from where I stopped today. But I want you to go rejoicing knowing that the truth you speak today will fight for you tomorrow. Nobody may believe you today, but keep speaking the truth because the truth you speak today, you will get to reap it tomorrow. And until I come back next week, I want you to go confident, believing that you are a champion and you are born to rule and reign in life. Amen. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefun, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.